species, and biological control. So in your notes, um, the number one cause of endangered species or loss of biodiversity is habitat loss. The number two cause is invasive species. And this is a much more modern phenomena because of transportation of stuff across the ocean. We can ship stuff across the world uh, very quickly and very rapidly. And so we've seen a lot of invasive species come about in the last um, 50 years or less. It used to be, again, transportation was much slower. So the number two cause of loss of biodiversity is invasive species. So what in the world is an invasive species? And in your notes, it talks about, it says, what are native species or endemic species? Change an endemic to indigenous. So native or indigenous, and you see this here on the screen. Um, you've maybe heard of indigenous, like in your history classes or world cultures, uh, indigenous you know, people are native to an area. So it's just another way of saying native. Same thing with species. Indigenous species are species that are native to it. So they belong somewhere. It's where their natural home is. Um, and so a native species is um, a species that belongs somewhere. Again, the other name is indigenous. Endemic, which was just a typo in your notes. Endemic, and this is a good word to know though, are species, um, are plants or animals that exist only in one geographic region. So for example, a Manx cat only is found on the Isle of Man, a lemur. So if you watched um, any of the movies Madagascar, um, the lemurs did all the dancing in that movie, but there are actual real lemurs, not just cartoon characters, and they are endemic, only found in Madagascar. So um, that's what endemic means, and endemic species actually are likely to become endangered species because if we wipe out where they belong or an invasive species comes in and wipes out where they belong, um, it can become a real problem. But big idea, native, all species belong somewhere and they're called native or indigenous species. But what that leads to is the fact that there can be non-native species. So again, every species is native somewhere. But a non-native species is a species that has been moved either intentionally, like buckthorn brought here to the United States intentionally at first, um, or by accident. We'll talk about the zebra mussel and the brown tree snake. They were accidentally brought somewhere else. Um, but a species that has been moved to another area with similar conditions and it's able to survive. Uh, if we took piranhas and we put piranhas in lakes around here, they would not survive because uh, they could not survive our winters. The water temperature would get too cold for them. So we wouldn't worry about piranhas taking over uh, Lake Opeka because the conditions wouldn't be similar. But species native in parts of like China that have similar conditions could become a problem in Lake Opeka. Other names for non-native species are invasive. Um, exotic, introduced, uh, alien. Those are all other names for non-native species. So again, you'll sometimes hear them say it's an introduced species or an exotic species. Just think non-native for all of those types of species. And some of the general characteristics for an invasive species. So when a species becomes a problem is that they are generalists. So they can live in a wide range of conditions. So not endemic species. Um, but can, um, species that are very generalized in how they can live. The conditions have to be similar. So again, I did that example of the piranha. A piranha could not live in lakes here around Des Plaines um, because the conditions are not similar enough. Prolific. Prolific means uh, reproduces early and often, so produces lots of offspring. Typically not always what's called an R strategist, and we'll talk more about that later, but again, having a lot of offspring at a young age and um, they can outcompete uh, native species with um, because of their early reproduction, um, that they have lots of offspring, etc. And then what happens is in their new area, they don't have natural predators. That's not actually a characteristic that they have, but that's part of why they're able to thrive so well. So that's just kind of an introduction to non-native species, and now I'm going to get into some specific